welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. What are we drinking today, Adam? Today we are drinking Mayday Offerings. <laughs> it is a smoked Scottish ale in conjunction with Mayday. And burning Sergeant Howie, yeah. too. <laughs> in the Wicker Man. <laughs> today we're going to bring to you 1982's Alone in the Dark, directed by Jack Shoulder. He did a movie that we reviewed start yeah. of season two, which was uh, Nightmare on Elm Street 2. Jesse! It stars... Jack... Balance. <laughs> Donald Pleasance is in this. And Martin Landau is also in this, too. <laughs> it starts off with a dream sequence. Martin Landau's character goes to this kind of diner. Donald Pleasance is there, and he's, he's <laughs> like the cook, and he's got this big fucking meat cleaver type thing, and he gets served this kind of raw fish propelled upside down, and there's all these flames, and Donald Pleasance comes with this big cleaver and is about to, like, chop him down the middle, down the groin, and then... That's it. Dr. Potter, he's going to this mental asylum run yeah. by Leo Bain. Thinks he's talking to the front desk secretary and it ends up being a patient. <laughs> so you can tell that Leo runs things a bit differently. He kind of lets the inmates run the asylum to a degree. Potter's taken to the third floor. And the third floor is where they keep the worst. Introduced to four main psychopaths in this movie. Frank Hawks, he's an ex-POW. Dr. Potter! Happy trails. <laughs> Pyromaniac Preacher, played by Martin Landau. An obese child molester and a homicidal maniac who is known as the Bleeder because before he makes a kill... He starts bleeding from his nose. We don't actually see his face. He's always hiding his face. He's either got his back turned to the camera or there's like somebody standing in front of him. Find out that every night Frank Hawks tests the security to make sure it's working. He's always trying to get out. And they come up with this idea where Dr. Potter has actually killed the old doctor and replaced him. And they want to get out to kill him. There's a great big power outage. Frank Hawks, he goes and tests the windows. No security alarm. They don't yeah. shut on their own. They get out of their cells. There's the one kind of guy that sort of runs the floor, I guess. The one child molester guy he picks him up and just crunch right down on his knee and just breaks him in half. They end up escaping out of the hospital. Join all of the looting that's going <laughs> on because of this power outage. Rioting, <laughs> rioting. and everything. And killing just people. Because there's and... a power outage. <laughs> so it's, it's a little extreme. They end up grabbing a whole bunch of weapons. Bleeder actually gets himself a hockey mask. He takes off on his own and it kind of leaves the three of them they're following this poor bastard mailman trying to wave him by and they just back right into him and he all goes <laughs> yeah. flying for his hat yeah just because they want his hat <laughs> mr potter and his wife they leave and they leave their little girl at home there's a babysitter that's supposed to be coming by and the child molester comes by and he poses as the babysitter. It gets very unsettling because he's like, why don't we go upstairs and we can we can draw pictures together. The real babysitter ends up showing up, checks on the kid. It appears that she's sleeping. Well, she's got a bit of time, so she'll phone her boyfriend, right? And maybe get a little busy here, get a little bit of action of going. Of course, <laughs> it's the 80s, it's a horror movie. They hear a noise in the closet. So he gets up and he goes and checks it out, nothing. And as he gets closer to the bed, bring something grabs his leg and pulls him right under the bed. A big knife, a big blade comes up from underneath the bed. So now she's on top of this bed with this knife coming up. Dr. Potter's sister and his wife are at this protest. They end up getting arrested. This one nice guy who ends up giving them his phone call. The sister and the wife, they take this man back to their house. Psychopaths end up sieging the house and sort of trapping them in. Dr. Leo has to come by and sort of try and use his psychology yeah. to try and rear them in and get them into their space. <laughs> <laughs> you guys out there! This is Leo! <laughs> and that's where we're gonna end it. If you want to see what happens to the Potter family and Leo and all the escaped mental patients, keep watching Alone in the Dark. One of the great things about this movie is the music. Yeah. Again, we always got to mention the music. 80s synth feel, right? Yeah. But it also has like a big orchestral score too, so mm -hmm. it's a good blend between the two. Yeah. Of course the cast. 
and the characters really make this movie. Jack Palance, Donald Pleasance, Martin Landau, they're all great. The actor who plays the child molester, he's he's really creepy. Like Jack Palance is great in this. He plays <laughs> such a good psychopath, mm -hmm. but in not in a crazy way, in kind of like a composed psychopath way. In a normal yeah. sense. And on the other hand, uh, Martin Landau plays a great kind of outlandish psychopath with, with the crazy laugh. Yeah, and he even asks Leo, yeah. can I have some matches? Oh, well, here you go. He yeah, like, why would, <laughs> why would you give a pyromaniac matches, you know? <laughs> this movie has a lot of unsettling scenes in it, too. That scene with him and the child when they're alone in the kitchen, it's really kind of unsettling and unnerving, just knowing what he is what the, he is yeah in the way he speaks to her and his intentions it's like oh man yeah there's another cool scene the the whole bed scene it's very tense it's a long time of like them kind of like kissing and this kind of sex scene and you you know something is gonna happen yeah, it has to because you know that guy's in the house and they do a real good job of dragging you along and just waiting for that to mm -hmm. happen and you don't expect the guy to be dragged under the bed <laughs> dragging under the bed is more of like a maybe a supernatural thing as mm -hmm. opposed to like a slasher type thing knife is coming through the bed i kept thinking what would i do and you're watching her think the same thing. She doesn't know what to do. It's a really cool scene because, like, do you stay on the bed and try to avoid or do you run? I love that tough decision that yeah, she yeah. has on the bed. It's it's really cool. The kills are great. They're really good. Uh, I think the first one is when they snap that poor guy's back in half. That's rare to see that. Yeah. How, can, how <laughs> you know? can you beat that? <laughs> yeah, I know. The meat cleaver. Yeah. <laughs> There's a scene where the bleeder puts on the hockey mask and I immediately knew the year the movie took place, right? Mm -hmm. I'm like, what came first? I looked it up and the movies were shot at the same time. Yeah. But Friday the 13th Part 3 came out like two, three months before this one. This movie didn't know about the hockey mask. So they both kind of did the hockey mask thing at the same time, which is kind of neat. Right. It's a very original plot in Halloween. Halloween is about a mental patient escaping and terrorizing someone in the house. Yeah. This is kind of the same plot, but it's done in such a different way. There's not just one person. It's a whole group of them who escape. They're not wearing masks. They're not, yeah. they're not really hiding in shadows. We know who they are. We know who they look like. Pulled off in a really new way. Because you follow them throughout the whole movie, even though they do these bad things and stuff, you still sort of sympathize with them. Because you know in, they're in the nuts. End. Yeah, you know they're crazy and they're... Right, they it's... think that they're completely in the right... The ending to this movie, too, not that we're going to give anything away, there's kind of two endings to it. All the mayhem gets wrapped up. After that, there's an extra scene shows how kind of the story can continue even a yeah. little bit, right? You're going to have to watch to see how it all comes together and yeah. wraps up. A old classic 80s movie with a bunch of veterans. Oh. Jack Palance at probably one of his better performances. Uh, Not Dracula, you mean? No. <laughs> I'm Dracula. Kind of a different take on the escaped mental patient <laughs> slasher. Check out Alone in the Dark. It's a lot of fun. Yep. Memorable moments and lines and a lot of good tension. Check it out. Keep drinking. And happy trails. trails.